Um, hi, my name is Lauren Freed. Um, I am a rheumatologist and junior faculty um, currently at the University of California, Los Angeles. Um, but today we're talking about um, a study that I did while I was a fellow at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Well, welcome to Rheumatology Network. I really appreciate your time today. Um, we, like you said, we wanted to talk about your study that was published this week in ACR Open Rheumatology. Uh, physical activity patterns in people with inflammatory arthritis indicate they have not received recommendation-based guidance from healthcare providers. So tell us about your study. Uh, what were your objectives in, in starting this? Um, well, just so I guess to start with a little bit of background. Um, so exercise has been studied in people that have arthritis and this study uh, specifically looked at people that had inflammatory arthritis, which are things like rheumatoid arthritis, um, psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. Um, and studies show that exercise is safe and beneficial for people that have these types of arthritis. Um, however, we didn't really have any guidelines on how these people should be exercising, even though all of our recommendations uh, for us as healthcare providers tell us that we should encourage our people to exercise. Um, so in uh, July of 2018, the European League Against Rheumatism, which is one of the major recommending bodies for rheumatology, um, actually put out a set of evidence-based guidelines which validated the American College of Sports Medicine, American Heart Association recommendations on physical activity for the general public for people that have inflammatory arthritis and osteoarthritis. And so what they did um, was validate these um, by looking at a bunch of studies that have been done in the past. Um, and they said that people with inflammatory and osteoarthritis um, should be participating regularly in four different types of exercise. So that is cardiovascular or aerobic exercise, strength, um, flexibility exercises, and balance exercises. So um, since this was a new study, the purpose of our, or this was, these were new guidelines. The purpose of our study um, was to look at these four types of exercise um, and uh, assess, uh, look at our inflammatory arthritis population at, uh, at Penn and um, try and gauge uh, through a survey uh, how many, um, or quantify the numbers of people that were participating in each of these four types of exercise. Um, and then by looking at people that were participating uh, in more types of the exercise or identified as more active, try to identify um, what some of the um, facilitators and barriers were to them participating in regular physical activity. And then also try to gauge whether or not these people might have been um, getting any more guidance um, or encouragement from their healthcare providers. Mm -hmm. And you found that indeed they were not getting the guidance they felt they needed. Is that correct? Yeah, so it was very interesting. So um, what we ended up finding was um, some things that had been found in the literature previously. Um, so um, we found that most of our patients were um, participating you know, the most of them that were active were participating in regular cardiovascular exercise, which is kind of the longest standing known recommendation. So we sort of expected that. Um, but we found that people that were participating um, in more of the recommended exercise domains weren't necessarily receiving any more guidance from their healthcare providers than people who weren't participating in those. Um, and um, so overall, the entire population of patients, whether they were more active or less active, um, were not reporting um, high levels of guidance from their healthcare providers on how they should be exercising. Mm -hmm. And were you surprised by these findings? So we weren't necessarily surprised by them. It's something that's been studied before and something that's been reported before. Um, and like I said, these recommendations were pretty new when we decided to do the study. Um, so it was kind of meant to be a sort of a baseline um, and sort of like to, to be a baseline for where we are at encouraging our patients to exercise now that these recommendations are out and having these new recommendations. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a surprise, um, but it was kind of meant to highlight the um, fact that we have room for improvement in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and how important is it to have these four forms of exercise? Um, I think the, the majority of your patients said they were getting the cardiovascular aerobic exercise, but the strength training and the other exercises kind of fell by the wayside. 
uh, they were looking for maybe more direction from their physician, but how important is it for a patient with uh, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis engage in these four types of exercise? So I think it's very, I think it's very important. And I think that um, anybody that has the time to read um, the uh, recommendations from the European League Against Rheumatism, they go into a lot of detail about um, how important it is. Um, these forms of exercise have been studied for um, all people that have these types of arthritis. They've shown to be safe and beneficial. Um, and the importance of them is that they, uh, the importance of participating in regular exercise is that they can address some of the thing, is that um, exercising addresses some of the things that medication necessarily doesn't. So um, exercising regularly helps with fatigue in people that have arthritis. It helps with sleep. It helps with weight control, with helps, which also helps with pain. So um, it's very important as an adjunct modality to medication um, to manage some of the other factors of arthritis that impact quality of life. Mm -hmm. and, and strength training in particular is good for joints, right? It's important to keep uh, the muscles strong around uh, j j joints that are suffering from inflammation or something. Is that correct? You froze for a second, but I think that I got, uh, yes, I think I got the whole question. Okay. Yeah, and so strength training in particular, and that's been studied on its own as well. Um, doing high, doing um, higher levels of resistance training and strength training, yes, it keeps um, all of the muscles strong. It keeps the muscles from um, what we call atrophying, um, which can happen in disuse. So if you don't exercise, um, then, and you aren't doing uh, strength training with your muscles, then um, you know you might have you, you can have weak muscles, and that can lead to further joint damage and injury. So it is important to um, yeah do resistance training and keep um, the entire body nice and strong. In your practice, do you have any examples of patients who do employ these types of exercises um, and patients who don't, and how their outcomes are different? Well, I would say that I've, what I've noticed is that um, people that are, I, d I definitely have people, I encourage all of my patients to exercise and a lot of the people that have kind of newer diagnosis, I send them to physical therapy right away so that they learn how to move and maintain their mobility. And that I think uh, I would say would be um, the main difference is that people that are able to um, keep exercising and that do exercise throughout their diagnosis, uh, throughout their um, you know, throughout their life and, you know, after, before they're diagnosed and after they're diagnosed with arthritis, these people um, do kind of report lower levels of disease activity, lower pain, um, and less fatigue, better sleep. So all of these factors, like I was talking about that impact quality of life, the people that are kind of regular exercisers don't have um, as many complaints about those things. You know, how do you know what exercise to do, how much to do, when to stop, because pain is always there. Um, you know, and these are the things doctors just don't address. They just say exercise and there, there are no specifics in terms of, uh, aerobics or strength training or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so, yeah. so that's, what's great about these guidelines is that these, they actually do offer a lot of the specifics that you're talking about. So they talk about, they, these specify the quantity of aerobic exercise the, and, um, they, they quantify the amount of each type of exercise. So the amount of aerobic, the amount of flexibility, the amount of balance, the amount of strength. So they give the quantity and the quality of those. And they also talk about, um, if you know, if you, you don't have the time to go through them all, but they talk about the, um, like the minimum amount you can do and start with to start to um, notice a benefit and build towards a goal. So um, that's what's really important and helpful about these guidelines is that they do kind of show like what the minimum amount is where you can start to see a benefit and start to be able to, uh, you know, at least build a foundation for exercise patterns. Um, and then they also do offer um, ways for providers to discuss exercise with their patients um, and how to get started and about some of those things you're talking about, like to reassure people that this isn't gonna damage your joints further, that's been studied. Um, and to talk to people about things in specific, um, in specific types of arthritis that maybe we should limit that are contraindicated or things that are okay for them to do. Um, and then, um, you know, referring, making the, it talks about, the, the guidelines talk about um, moving towards kind of having goals. So working towards a goal 
um, to improve your levels of physical fitness. So um, yeah, I think that that's what's really nice about these is that they do actually, if you're able to, if providers and even patients are able to sit down and read them, they answer a lot of those questions that you're talking about. Now, um, I wonder, in practice, physicians are very busy. Um, they've got a finite uh, amount of time to meet with uh, patients. Um, would it be helpful um, if a nurse or an educator met with the um, patient um, just to follow up to make sure that they are exercising, they are meeting or have met with a physical therapist? Um, are there some solutions here you know, to the problems you highlighted in the study? So I think that they, um, yeah, I think that that's a great idea. And I was actually um, think that that would be a really good idea for another research project, because like you say, physicians are, um, physicians are very busy and we have, you know, only get a certain amount of time to talk with the patients. So um, in thinking about where to take this research, like in the future, if this was something to, you know, we wanted to extend upon, it would be interesting to see if we could get um, a patient educator or a nurse that was specifically trained in how to talk to people about these things and see if, you know, give it, providing patients with counseling, if that could improve some of their exercise habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to leave, leave us with today? Um, I just think that it's, um, I think it's interesting to highlight in general that these recommendations have been out there for a long time um, in terms in applying them to the general public. And it's very um, interesting that these are, you know, these have been validated now for people with arthritis. So people with arthritis um, can be, you know, when their disease is well controlled, they're capable of doing all of the same things that people without arthritis are able to do. Um, and so, and those are all the types of exercise that they should be doing and um, that we want them to be able to do. Um, so yeah, I think that that's kind of the take home message um, and that that's our goal is to get them there and to encourage them to participate in those things. Okay, well, thank you. On that note, I'd like to thank you again for being here. We look forward to uh, more uh, re reading more of your studies uh, along these uh, lines, and uh, we'll follow up with you. All right, thanks okay. so much. Thank you.